And then Allah says in ayah number 126, Do they not see that they are tried each year once or twice? Yet neither, yet they neither repent nor take heed. Now, who is Allah talking about when He says, "Do they not see that that they are tried each year?" Again, it's it's referencing the uh, the munafiqin. Now, what does it mean when Allah says, "Do they not see that they are tried once or twice every year? Yet they don't they do not repent." Now, remember. Munafiqeen, hypocrites, are basically undercover kuffar. And some of the mufassireen, they say once or twice a year, especially if you look at the Prophet's period in, uh, in Medina, once or twice a year there is a major military expedition. These munafiqeen, they're hoping the Prophet fails, but the Prophet is victorious time and time again. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is almost saying, it's almost like Allah is saying to them in this verse that, you know, don't I prove to you time and time again, once or twice a year, that this prophet is supported by God, that you saw him victorious in Badr, that you saw him, that even though they, they might have lost the battle in Uhud, they, they're still a resilient community. They, they were victorious in Khaybar and all of the other battles. Despite all of the, the, the enemies, despite all of the attacks on the Prophet and the Muslim community, he continues to emerge as victorious. Don't we test you by showing you these victories? Why don't you repent? Why don't you take heed? Other Mufassireen, they say the meaning of awala yarawna annahum yuftanuna fi kulli amin marratan aw marratain is that once or twice every year, the Prophet Allah Azza wa Jal would divulge the plots of the munafiqeen to the Prophet. So throughout the year, year after year, the hypocrites are plotting against the Prophet. They're conspiring against the Prophet. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He would expose them at least once a year or sometimes twice a year. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, do they not see that they are tried each year? Yuftanuna here, according to some, which means that they're exposed once or twice a year. Yet neither repent, nor do they take heed. So the verse is saying to these munafiqeen that, who do you think is exposing you? That you meet in secret. How do you think the Prophet always finds out about your your plots against him. That you should you should know by now that this is a man who is connected to revelation, that he's connected to the unseen world. That year after year, once or twice every year, your secrets and your plots, your malicious plots, are divulged and they are exposed and they are revealed to him. Allah says, despite the fact that they're you know they're shown all of these proofs year after year they refuse to repent and they don't take heed now we might read this verse and think that all oh, this this verse only applies to the munafiqeen during the time of the prophet but this verse can also apply to us because how how many times throughout the year does allah send us signs how many lessons does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us every year but we don't take heed. You know, how many funerals do we attend every year? Yet we attend and we continue living our lives as if we're never going to die. So in the same way that the, the hypocrites were not taking heed of the, the lessons and the signs that God was sending them, we also have to ask ourselves that, you know, how many, how many lessons is Allah giving us that we don't pay attention to? And one simple example is, you know, people are dying all around us. We don't take heed. We still act as though we're never going to die. We say that we believe 
in, in our own mortality. But we go to funerals, we see people buried in the ground, but we don't take a lesson. And then Allah says in verse number 127. And whenever a surah is sent down, they look at each other. They meaning the hypocrites. They look at each other. Saying, does anyone see you? Then they turn away. God has turned away their hearts because they are a people who don't comprehend. So the Prophet ﷺ, imagine that, that the Prophet is sitting on his mimba in Medina. And verses of the Quran are revealed to him. You know, when, when ayat would be revealed, the Prophet would ascend the pulpit and he would recite the verses. The Muslims would gather. And among the Muslims, there were these hypocrites. When the Prophet is reciting these Quranic verses, Allah says, ila ba'd. That these hypocrites, they would look at one another. They would look into each other's faces. Now, why would they look at each other? Some of the commentators, they say that they, they look at each other, you know, in, in their state of discontent, that they're listening to the Prophet and they're so outraged and discontent and angry about what the Prophet is teaching that they look at each other, almost in disgust over what they're hearing from the Mimba. So this is one of the reasons why they may be looking at each other. And other commentators, they say, no, they look at each other because whenever verses would be revealed, they were always afraid that the verses were about them. So that they lived in this perpetual state of fear. So when the Prophet would be reciting the verses, the Munafiqeen would look at one another almost as though, like, is he talking about us? Is he gonna is he gonna say something about us? Does anyone see you? So when they would look at each other, some of the commentators they would say they would almost catch themselves that, oh my god, is anyone looking at us? Does anyone see the expressions of disgust on our faces when the Prophet is speaking? And sometimes, you know, they would become so enraged by what they were hearing that they could not even conceal their anger that they would leave the majlis. Meaning the Prophet is speaking and they would get up and they would leave. ثُمَّنْ صَرَفُوا صَرَفَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ look at, look at how angry Allah becomes with them. That when they leave, the Prophet is speaking, and they get up in the middle of his sermon and they leave. Allah says, you know, in the same way they turn away from the Prophet, they leave. Allah says, صَرَفَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ That God has turned away their hearts because they are a people who do not comprehend. See, this is how dangerous it is. You know, when you disrespect the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deprives you of guidance. That you cannot, you cannot ask Allah for hidayah and disrespect the Prophet. And you know, subhanAllah, you know, when you go to, to Saudi Arabia, for example, you go to visit the, uh, you know, the same people who stand before Allah and they say, al-mustaqim, they destroy anything, any heritage of the Prophet any remnant of the Prophet. You know, they stand at the Prophet's grave with their back to the Prophet. You want Allah to guide you, but you're, you're, in, you're engaging in such disrespectful behavior towards the Prophet. So the same Munafiqeen who used to disrespect the Prophet by leaving his majlis, Allah says Allah turns away their hearts because of the disrespect that they show to the Prophet. And, and a practical lesson that we can learn from this is that, you know, sometimes when we're listening to a scholar or we hear a new fatwa or, you know, sometimes we turn away because it's something new, something that we haven't heard, that we, we, we're dismissive about a hadith that we've never heard before, or there's a new ruling that we might not be familiar with. 
we have to always have this humility that we shouldn't have the the mindset of munafiqeen who turn away when they hear something that they don't like uh, also i was curious about the, the story you told about when the prophet would be on the pulpit reciting the verses to people and some of the munafiqeen they would stand up and leave that sounds like that would be a very a way for them to very openly reveal themselves by leaving in the middle of the, the revelation of verses like that. How was that not a complete giveaway? You know, it's it's you know when when you think about it like that, you know, if, if we were if we were if the prophet was sitting and there was say 10, 15, 20 people in attendance. And, and two or three of them were to get up, yeah, that would that would definitely draw attention. But you have to understand that this is this is ha this is at the end of the prophet's life. You have thousands, hundreds, or at least thousands who are in attendance. So when you have that type of crowd, it's not it's it's not it's not a dead giveaway for a few people to walk out because again, you know. Just like in our gatherings, maybe maybe they left because you know they had to answer the call of nature, or maybe something happened, or you know they have some business to attend to. So it wasn't always seen as though okay, because they left, they're automatically uh, munafiqeen. Sometimes they were just able to blend in with just the the, the sheer size of the uh, the crowd that it was in attendance. So it, it wasn't necessarily a, a dead giveaway. Now, when these verses are revealed, you can imagine that. What we mean are start they're going to start to pay closer attention to you know who's who's leaving they're going to start paying attention to facial expressions when the prophet speaks so it wasn't it wasn't you know it wasn't a dead giveaway you know when you see a few people walk out some of them did not all of them did so the eye doesn't say that all of them would walk out but there were definitely a number of them that would uh that would leave you know the uh you know the the medjlis.